So what does culture do? <clears throat> there are two or three things I think we need to take note of. First, cultures universally respond to human problems and human challenges by developing systems to deal with them. Economic systems seem to be at the top. Um, I, when I first came to teach at Notre Dame, would about once a week go over to the main building, to the treasurer's office, and I would cash a check. I'd write a check for about $50, and I'd put the money in my wallet, and in a week or 10 days, it would be gone. I'd have to go back and write another check. Uh, I did get direct deposit. I didn't have to take a paycheck over and either cash it or deposit it directly. Um, but I used a fair amount of banknotes in my wallet. <clears throat> I would tell you now two things about my wallet. Number one, there isn't a lot of cash in there. And what's in there is in the maximum a $20 bill, some fives, tens, and ones. Why 20s? I mean, there's a specific reason for that. The answer is, it's what an ATM kicks out. An AK ATM doesn't kick out 50s and 100s, uh, and it's been a long time since I've seen anything larger than that. A $20 bill seems to work because we sort of asynchronously go ask for cash at an ATM. But I have to tell you right now, as I stand in this television studio, I can't tell you the last time I went to an ATM. I am I suppose it was a few months ago. I just don't spend cash. All of it goes on my American Express card. They calculate member membership miles. I've got a Visa card to back that up. Um, my sense is it all goes on credit. When I go to the dry cleaners these days, of course, my credit account is linked to me. They recognize me when I walk in and they just hand me my dry cleaning and I leave, right? And it, that bill goes through American Express and there's no transaction. Economic systems change in order to suit what we think are our best interests. Keep your eye on that. Marriage and family systems, this one is interesting. What constitutes a family? Uh, that definition is changing. Uh, it may increasingly involve multi-generational families in some parts of the world. Uh, it may involve same-sex couples. It may involve adopted children. It may involve blended families in many ways. There is still an argument in many parts of this country about who gets to marry whom and what constitutes a marriage, what constitutes a family. But increasingly, employers have said, we don't really care as much what the state says. If you declare this person to be your partner, we'll provide um, health care benefits, we'll provide them with access to the same kinds of uh, systemic benefits that we provide to you. Um, the same is true in many cases of uh, children, some who are adopted, some unadopted living with you, others who may, uh, in fact, uh, just be living there short periods of time. Educational systems are a function of culture. And I, I would say to many of you, if you haven't been to a good barroom fight recently, you might visit a Texas school book meeting. Uh, when the state of Texas buys school books, they sell tens of thousands of them over at least a three-year period. And so there is a great deal of discussion, much of it heated, about what goes into those textbooks because education is a structured way in which the culture tells us who is certified to be a member of society with a high school diploma uh, or more? Um, what constitutes an educated person or not? There's a very clear distinction here at Notre Dame between giving someone a diploma for a degree or a certificate for a non-degree program. And there are very clear rules about how you have to uh, deal with assessment of learning goals, how you deal with assessment of student performance in order to qualify 
for a certificate or a diploma. And in many ways, some of that is changing. And we're beginning to look, for example, at the German system uh, of apprenticeships, uh, journeyman training. Uh, much of that has considerable value. Uh, we haven't thought much in the last 125 years in this country about those kinds of systems, but we're thinking more about it now. Uh, finally, supernatural belief systems, uh, pretty interesting. What constitutes a church? Most of that is uh, about being tax-free. But in some respects, people have claimed religious belief as the basis for the way they interact with and treat others. So what constitutes a religion, what doesn't, um, and to what extent can you impose or even interact with other people based on elements of your own religion. Those are ongoing discussions. And I would say those are going to be challenges over the next 20, 30 years that we're going to have to think about resolving. But they're one of the basic functions of culture.